Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day and today we got some more Battle Right going on. I know a lot of you loved this gameplay and wanted to see more so today we're going to be taking a look at Ashka, the Molten Fury, one of the best if not the best champions in this game. Seriously, he's he's like one of the best champions uh, that I have seen. I'll tell you why in a second. We're actually going to go through several games today so that you have a longer, more of a 20-minute type video here because I know these games last pretty, uh, they don't last very long. And so I'm going to walk you through his abilities during the game. But just so you want to see him, you can see he's a ranged champion. He's a pyrokinetic mage, mass creature specializing in dark sorcery and pyrokinetic powers, casting devastating fire spells on his opponents and avoiding close combat. Don't be fooled by his size. Ashka's inner demon strikes fear into all who face him. And this is absolutely true. Ashka has some serious uh, firepower in this game, and he's one of, like I said, the best champions. So stay tuned for some more gameplay coming up in a second, and congrats to the winner of the Battle Ride Early Access giveaway. That was Ricardo. Cool thing is I'll be doing another one in this video. So go ahead and enter into the contest if you want to get access to this game. And, of course, it's just a few steps away. Make sure you do that, and you'll also get this cool VIP mount. Otherwise, you can ride that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You could ride that, or you could ride that. And then there's no question. Enter into the giveaway, guys, and let's get into the gameplay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the gameplay. Here we go. We're getting into it, and right now you'll see I'm choosing my battle right. And this is just kind of the superpower I get at each round. You kind of can augment your abilities, kind of like picking traits or talents in World of Warcraft. And so I'm going to get my first one here. I'm usually going to take Blaze, and that's going to increase my movement speed after I use Searing Flight, which is my movement ability. Also does a little bit of damage, but it's a great way for Ashka to get around. So I'm going to have an uh, uh, Empowered Basic Attack after I use that, and just a little bit more mobility afterwards as well. Now we're going in onto the Iva. It looks like she's going to jump away, which is very good. I'm going to use my Searing Flight. I got the Empowered Basic, but I did miss it. That Fireball gets countered there by Shifu. He's going to go Immaterial, but now I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one battle with him. The Firestorm initiates on my side. That's going to launch four deadly Firebolts at him, and it's going to do a lot of damage. The Ashka getting taken down by our, uh, the Iva getting taken down by our Shifu. A Molten Fist to get closer. Kind of has two dashes there is Ashka, and he's really one of the best champions in my opinion. One of the reasons he can just fire so quickly, and look at this damage here. Onto the Iva, she's going to do a nice jump away, but I got one more shot, and I do hit her before she's able to get away, and I take her down. Now it's just us and the Sifu, a Molten Fist. Knocks him back, and there's the ultimate. Got to stay away from that. My ultimate's alive as well, and I hit him with that. The Scorching Flame? No, Infernal Scorch is going to kill him, and see Shifu's ultimate on my side of things is gonna clean things up. So that's round one. That went really, really nicely. We kind of just focused on, uh, we focused on the Iva really early on and that was really strong for us uh, as, as, as just a, a unit. Getting rid of the Iva and kind of picking off the weak link, weak link for us was really, really good. Of course, you gotta be wary of that jetpack. She's got a lot of mobility and so it may not be easy if she's expecting this next round. Um, one of the things about Ashka I think is so strong is that and one of the reasons I'll say he's so strong is because I've played a lot of these champions, and some of the champions, like Lucy, uh, who I think is maybe one of the weakest champions, I want to show her, I want to show you guys her, but I just would play this game and lose eight out of eight out of nine games. And honestly, when I play Ashka, I probably win nine out of eleven or twelve games. I mean, it, the win rate is significantly. Uh, different and honestly he's just so strong I felt playing against him too is serious one of the reasons it makes him so strong is he barely takes any movement speed penalty for his basic attacks so you can see I can keep in range and I'm also still steadily moving almost even being able to dodge a really nice stun however from my flame strike did set up a lot of damage onto the Iva there's her shield and that's gonna give her increased movement speed and uh, she's gonna use her jetpack to get into the fight my ultimate is ready I gotta make sure I use it Shifu's picking up a couple of green health nuggets and there goes Iva so it's now a 2v1 again the counter comes through he's immaterial so I wanted to wait for that now my ultimate is available immaterial again but the firestorm is all I'll need it looks like to secure the kill I use a searing flight and an empowered basic attack it's gonna hit him with the ignite and also a ton of damage ignite is basically uh, what he gets off of his firestorm balls his firestorm projectiles and basically it's a passive it's a damage over time effect when he hits him with that and when you use searing flight your next basic attack 
uh, becomes uh, empowered and ignites the target if it hits as well. So you get that 8 extra damage, which is really strong, uh, considering his next damage is 12. So that's going to be the uh, forfeit, it looks like. They have already quit the game, so that was just a strong showcase. And uh, really nice early game. So we're going to move on into the next game ASAP, get a little bit of credit, and move on into game 2 here. And here we are, moving into game two. We've got Shifu as well, but now we're facing a Paloma and a Croak, I believe. So, uh, much different squad. Paloma's probably one of the best, if not the best, I think the best support in the game. Uh, whereas Ashka is one of the best, I think, damage type champions. So, this will be a really good battle to see who's the best of the best here. Shifu's also really strong as well. These are probably three of the best champions, I think, in the game at the moment. Um, and of course they added a new champion as well since I've last showcased the game I haven't taken a look at him yet, but if you guys want me to cover him, please do let me know his name is Rook Now they seem to get a little pressure on us here So we're gonna back away very patient play by me and my teammate just not really worrying about you know He's not being very committal. I'm not being very committal and I'm gonna get my on my mount just for a little bit of uh, Extra movement speed they got the health uh, bar in the middle But it doesn't matter because I'm gonna pick up actually some extra energy, which is great and we still haven't lost anything. There's the stun from the flame strike, setting up a, not, a lot of nice basic attacks. A molten fist away, and it looks like the Paloma, her damage is going to be too much for me. I cannot stay in that spot, so I use my Searing Flight to get out of the way as the toxins keep flying in from Croak. And now it looks like we have a chance to get the green, and I'm actually going to use the Firestorm to zone them away, make sure they can't get there. Searing Flight is going to do a lot of damage. The Ghost Wolf does get rooted, uh, but it doesn't matter because I'm trying to hit her. A nice Molten Fist to separate both of them, and this is trouble for the Paloma. She uses the other side. I'm looking for a Flame Strike Stun, but I don't catch it, and now it is the Croak. He's incapacitated. I'm looking for the Firestorm. I gotta stay alive, and somehow I am. This is huge. I don't know where the Croak is. Do they know how low I am? They may not. There's the ultimate, though. It's going to do a lot of damage. We get the Green Orb, and I'm able to stay alive the croak must be crazy trying to kill me i knock him away with the molten fist and he cannot stay near me there's the stun the anticipatory flame strike and we are both so low. He is alive, though, and Croak sees me. I'm getting them separated just by the bait. The enemy is slain. He takes care of the Paloma, and now it's 2v1. This is absolutely huge. I should definitely stay away. A Molten Fist is going to keep him away, and this is just so frustrating for him. I can imagine Ashka so good at just getting away from targets. And there it is, the stun. I anticipated where he was going. Here's the ultimate. We're going to take him down. It looks like the Ignite damage is not there. Searing Flight there, and the last Empowered Flame Strike shot is going to take him down. Down. Oh my goodness gracious, what a round. That was absolutely nuts, and I get MVP of the round as I should. How did I stay alive? I don't even know. But what a first game, much more competitive than last game. Uh, and just so many different things. As you can see in this game, once you get at the higher levels of, of competition, so many things uh, basically matter. And now I noticed that the Croak was really getting on me. That Molten Fist was coming in handy, being able to knock him away and uh, also dash. And so what happens is that cooldown is now reduced by a second and a half with this battle, right? And also if I hit someone, it's reduced by another second and a half. So potentially three seconds if I hit him off a nine second cooldown, which is pretty short. So there it is. Now it's just a six second cooldown as you can see there I've got it up very very soon as well as my searing flight and look it's already up I want to get a little bit of damage Sifu a really nice teleport out of uh, trouble here but they pick up the green orb and that's not what we wanted but we'll pick some uh Pick some green on our size. I want to grab this energy. Knock the Paloma away. My ultimate is ready. And so I get out of dodge, but I do a ton of damage in the meanwhile. Now here's a Firestorm. I can't hit one, but I do hit enough. I knock away the Croak, and he's coming for me again. I've got the Searing Flight, though, to separate myself. And that movement speed from my first battle right is really helpful. We get the green this time. And that is huge for us, securing that objective. He's incapacitated. I get a little bit of damage. Anticipate where he's coming from, but I don't exactly get it right. There's his ultimate. He misses me. Thank goodness. That would have done a ton of damage. And now I want some more energy. I've got four bars. I almost have my ultimate again. Ashka's ultimate so good, and he's able to get it so frequently. He builds a lot of energy with his abilities and his basic attacks as well. And there it is. The ult doesn't get him, though. A nice avoid jump by Crow. Can't tell if that was on purpose or not. That was really solid. Now they're both really low. Oh, I get caught in the ultimate from Paloma, though, and that's going to be a snare. I'm stunned, and that's the death, and now it's 1v1. Here's our Shifu. Can he finish it off? He's got the counter available. Croak goes into it. A nice 32 damage hit by Shifu. 
Oh no, he's got to get it. What a spear though. And invisible takedown. Nice plays by the Shifu. I got to give him a nice job on that. That was some excellent play by him. I still get MVP of the round, which is very rare, especially if you die early on. So clearly I did enough to do, uh, to make some noise in that round, so to speak, guys. Uh, and now it looks like we've got a couple of options here. I can get the fireball. Uh, and this is a real, an interesting trait that I really like, actually. It allows me to, I believe this is the trait that allows me to make my, uh, normal fireball, my left mouse button, turn them into firestorm shots, uh, which are the big, more empowered ones that I usually have to shoot while I'm standing still. And what those do is they apply ignite and they do a little bit more damage. And so if I throw up my firewall, which blocks projectiles, you haven't seen it here. I don't like to use it till I get this trait. What it does is it blocks the projectiles and then it allows me to shoot fire storm projectiles instead. So it's really, really nice. Now they do a lot of damage on a Shifu. This is looking like a pretty tough round for us right now. They've got a lot of healing so far. We do get that green orb in the middle, which is really good for us. And the Searing Flight is going to allow me to pick up the other energy and the other health, which is a really good trade, but our Shifu is in trouble. And there's the firewall, and see? Look how they adjust there. And the nice Molten Fist to knock them away, but if you saw just for a moment there, they turned into uh, the bigger fireballs, and there's the ultimate, anticipating where he's gonna be. The Searing Flight to take down the Paloma, and oh man, this Croak just cannot buy a bucket. The Molten Fist gonna separate him. We get hit by the Toxin, but at this point, who cares, right? There's no way the stroke's gonna take me down. Oh, nice Venom, though. That was very strong by him. I'm able to Searing Flight away, and my ultimate does pick him up, which is very, very good. He's gotta take me down if he has a chance. The Shifu with the ultimate there. He's going for me. I missed the Molten Fist, but he misses the stun as well out of himself, and I'm picking up the, the green, and there's a Firestorm shot. He's looking low. We pick up the green with my teammate. The stun is there. 32 damage as well. And he's just one shot away. That's going to be it. He dives into me and he dives into death. And that's a 3-0 sweep. But very competitive games. But just really well played by both of us on my team there. So that's going to be game two. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Nice little showcase of Paloma as well. One of the better champions. And uh, hopefully we'll get some new champions you guys can check out as the ELO raises here in the game. Again, I lost so much playing Lucy, but uh, yeah, still climbing, steady climbing with that Ashka. Let's see if the next game can be as friendly to me. All right, here we are entering game three. And let me know what you guys think about these extended gameplays as well, especially for Battle Ride. I think it's very appropriate, especially when checking out a champion, seeing more than just, you know, a five-minute game. I think this 20-minute type of gameplay is uh, really valuable. So I'm enjoying it. Hopefully you all are as well. I'm heading off to TwitchCon very soon. And so I do hope you guys make sure to uh, check me out if you're going to be there. I'll be, we'll be on some of the Twitch, uh, I think, Prime streams over there talking Paladins and Smite and all that good stuff. Playing some Jing Chen's Mountain. So you want to check that out. Today we're playing against a Freya here in this game. What do you mean today? Same video. It's, you're playing against a Freya and a uh, Paloma again. So another really strong support. Freya really damaging and really aggressive frontline champion she gets the counter onto me there and paloma onto me however and she looks very aware they're going onto the freya but i'm providing a lot of great damage that's the paloma ult. oh that's actually the freya ult already uh and that's good and that's the paloma ult gonna get snared taking the second part of that damage and i get so snared i cannot fight and after having such a great start to this match i felt i just got caught by that paloma ult and what a game changer that was taking off just just a chunk of my life keeping me in a great position for their Freya to just knock me down and now we're at a disadvantage here so this is looking a much more intense challenge than some of the games before I'm actually looking like I'm gonna go for a different trait here and gain a little bit of a shield after I use the searing flight I believe and that will allow me to stay a little bit more um, I just keep a little bit more of my health stay a little more healthy in these fights especially since the pressure was pretty real for me would have loved to have just a little bit more of that health uh, available. Just a little bit more of a buffer to stay alive. I see the Freya aggressing very hard. She does get stunned, though, out of the counter. That's a lot of damage already off of me. Look at that there. A really nice play, though, to just continue to put the damage onto the Freya. Now she's really feeling it here. The Firestorm projectiles are coming through, and that's a lot already. A good panic silence uh, by the Paloma. Now the ultimate is ready after all that I've done. That's a fast ultimate, but there's the Paloma ultimate as well. However, Freya is not able to take advantage of it because of the fact that 
that she is run away. My ultimate is still ready, though, and there's the Firestorm. It's going to take down the Freya, and now it's 2v1, which is fantastic. Our Freya actually misses, and now it's 1v1. Oh, dear gosh. This is it. She's got more health than me. It's a it's support versus the non-support here, the damage class. I've got my uh, homie's ultimate energy. And there's the Paloma. I'm going in, trying to get nearby. She's trying to uh, stay away, but it doesn't matter. The other side is going to help her out. Yeah, sure. I'm going to use the Searing Flight to get close, and that's her movement ability. I know it. There's her ultimate, and now she got she gets hit with mine. I knew that was going to happen, and we set it up, making sure the other side wasn't available. There's the Searing Flight, and that's the kill with about just as much health as I started the round with. And oh boy, get out play there, the Paloma. She's probably going to want some revenge for that. Hopefully, she does not get it, though. As we now even things out one to one. 615. Nice score for that game. So here we go. We've got a couple of uh, options here. I might get the firewall again. This is one of the ones I like. I, at this level, I, round three, I don't really like any of these very much. I don't like the flame strike healing because it's not that consistent and it's not that much healing. I mean, it's a decent amount, but uh, it's like a normal heal from any support champion. And, uh, you know, it's a nice swing. I just don't. I just don't really feel that it applies that well. I really like the offense of this and the projectile uh, stop. There's a nice stun on the Paloma there. And so we've already got a ton of damage onto her. Force the other side and forcing the separation from her and Freya, which is also a very strong point. And now me and Freya are going at it a little bit, trying to get away. The Molten Fist wasn't enough. I'm not shooting her because of the counter, but a nice stun just because I know she's going aggressive onto me. You can throw that stun onto yourself because you obviously are knowing that's where the melee champions are going to go. And we steal the green orb and the ultimate is ready. This could be huge for us looking for that ult and there it is i don't actually get a ton of damage onto the freya and I actually jump into the paloma ult which is not what i want and i get taken down but there is my ally gets taken down but there is the a paloma getting taken down as well and that's a stun and i get actually hit by the freya and oh no i get taken down i really thought i had that but what an ult by the freya to do all that damage and take me down and one of the things i realized too is i was in firestorm i wanted to move but pressing fire the right trigger again didn't actually save me. It didn't change it. There was actually a button. You press C, and that will cancel any ability that you're doing like that. And so it's really important to note, if I had just canceled and moved just an inch away, that ult would not have hit me, and I probably would have won that round, to be honest. And so now they're up 2-1 to one after killing the Paloma, of all people, early on. And the Freya just kind of outplays me there. So as much as I outplayed last round, Gotta outplay this round. That was very, very unfortunate. Here we go. Heading into round four, though. It's at least it's a good game. That's what I'm liking. Heading out, just being aggressive early on. Looking to kind of bait out some of these hammers. I do get hit by one, though, and I'm snared. And now the counter should be coming out, but there's a stun on my end. So we kind of stalemate it there. Trying to get away, searing flight. I recognize that the Paloma is uh, basically by herself. And nice avoidance there by the... Um, Freya to avoid my Molten Fist. I'm going to Searing Flight away again. Just reposition, and there's a good chance to Firestorm. A lot of damage, a lot of safety because I'm being body blocked by that Freya. The stun is coming out. I knew that counter was available, and now it secures that middle healing for us and some more ultimate charge. My ultimate is available, and this is what I love about that Flame Wall. Just doing the damage and being able to negate any of the projectiles she's shooting at me. A really good panic, though. Seems like she might have taken a trait for that. And there's a Paloma in a bad spot. And she's going to get taken down. Ignited by my ultimate there in the perfect spot. And I avoid hers. And now I'm going after the Freya. Trying to keep her away. A Molten Fist is going to keep her out of my team's way. And we're hopefully... Oh, we do not get the mid. But we will get those uh, nice little perks of the energy. Starting to stay near the Freya. And there's the Firestorm. The counter does pull me closer to her. And my ultimate is ready though. There's the stun. There's the damage. And it's not enough quite yet to get the kill onto her. I want this green orb. I see she's over on the right side, it looks like. And so now it's time to try and finish her off. And that's the kill. An ignited fireball is going to take her down. And that's two to two. And it all comes down to this. MVP of the round again, man. These games are getting tighter and tighter. But this is just great Ashka gameplay and a lot of fun. So much fun. I'm loving this game, guys. And hopefully you all are as well and uh, again make sure if you want to play that early access doesn't necessarily cost you 20 bucks you can get a 30 dollar value i think if you just enter that giveaway follows them on the links and uh get it i believe who is the winner what was his name i'm sorry i forgot the name of the winner but who is it who's the winner i have to look at the name now ricardo ricardo congrats on winning the other one buddy so that's cool you can be the next ricardo if you want to win that here it is the final round 
Just baiting out the hammers again. I do avoid them both this time, and so now I know that's on cooldown. The counter's coming in. She's anticipating something. No basic attacks yet. One hammer to me, though, but one basic attack to me. So it's pretty much even. That's two. Looking for that. I think they might be coming that way. Anticipating it with the flame strike stun, but not enough. Paloma, she's going to go towards me and a really nice potential panic, but I anticipate it and avoid it. Here's the flame wall. Just want to separate myself and look at the damage coming out from the ignite and blocking all the projectiles. I let the, uh, the uh, however, the Freya get the damage and our Freya is actually getting taken down really a lot right now. And there she is. I'm going after her. The ultimate is not used, but the Freya goes down. Oh, no. She's still alive. Oh, no. I got to get her. I got to take her down. One basic will do it pretty much. There it is. And that's why Ashka's so good. And it's just me and Paloma. It's 1v1. She's already got the uh, lead here. I want to get the health, and I'm going to get it. I have the body block, though, but that's 50 health. The Searing Flight is going to help me get close to that one. The other side is used, and now I want to pick up some more energy. There's a Paloma. She's trying to get the Ghost Root. My ultimate is available, but I want to bait this one out again. We're hitting each other with the basic attacks. My do, my do 12. Hers do 10. Again, the Molten Fist is going to separate some space there. And there's the Firestorm. It's going to do quite a bit of damage. She's going to panic me, try to fear me away. And now it's getting really close. But a nice ult by her to avoid mine. It does allow her to allow me to get the middle orb but wow what a thing and now she's going for the panic again the projectile wall attack looking to block it we're about even here the ghost wolf does miss it's one basic attack trying to find the other two champions going at it who's gonna get it the ultimate is ready i have one zero flesh but no she gets me with the last basic attack no and i oh no she gets me with the basic attack and that's the cleanup that's the victory. Oh, shouts out to Sats, though. GG on that one. Ah, one basic attack away. I really should have Searing Flight flew. I should have Searing Flew away. It would have uh, made me immune. Would have done 10 damage. Only losing 7 ELO, so clearly they were good, good players. But that's going to do it today for our Battle Right gameplay, guys. Make sure to get that VIP access mount and that early access code by entering the giveaway. And of course, guys, stay tuned to the channel. I'll be at TwitchCon, but hopefully uploading a video or two during the process, maybe a vlog and showcase of what's been going on there. And as always, y'all, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you all next time.